Positive intelligence, why only 20% of teams and individuals achieve their true potential and how you can achieve yours by Shirzad Chamin Book Review. Hello everyone. Today I am going to review the book, The Leader's Guide to Mindfulness. How to Use Soft Skills to Get Hard Results by Audrey Tang. Practical Mindfulness. If you ask a group of people what they understand about mindfulness, about half of them will talk about meditation or breathing or, perhaps, yoga. The other half will say that it's nonsense. They will disclaim interest in hearing anything more about it. Yet the business world has embraced the concept of mindfulness. Anything that helps you to be more aware of your being, enables you to take relaxed yet empowered action driven by choice rather than habit, and supports you in your compassion towards others, is mindful practice. Being aware, or mindful, of your limitations, along with your areas of strength, is an important way to create intrapersonal integrity, mental and relational health. Dobermont Thompson, 2017. Practicing mindfulness strengthens your leadership skills. Perhaps you multitask in your daily life and, as a result, find it hard to pay unfragmented attention to everything you do. Think about the number of times you've tried to talk to a family member or a friend and had to interrupt your conversation to take a call. The most effective leader is the person who can harness the mind of the collective to achieve more than could be done alone. You can become a better leader if you learn ways to balance what you do and how well you do it. In his book High Performance Habits, Brendan Burchard discusses an executive who found a way to clear his mind as he shifted from one assignment to the next. He would splash his face with water and do a quick set of physical exercises to end one task and prepare for the next. If you emulate this practice, you can refresh yourself and better prepare to end one chore and begin another. Making Decisions Leaders make decisions constantly. You might have a preferred method for decision making, or you might rely on what you've learned from your experiences. Problem solving is finding a cause. Decision making is choosing between options already laid out. When you face a decision, mindfulness can help you discern the limits of your knowledge. Use it to become more conscious of your prejudices, goals and values. A mindful approach also helps you distinguish between important information and mere noise. It may give you more faith in your decisions as it helps you prioritize and focus on choices that are strategically important. Mindfulness can prevent you from making emotional decisions. And it can energize you to tackle new challenges instead of just repeating the work you've found easiest in the past. You will always be a role model for someone. And it is better that you are a positive one in deed and in position. A mindful approach can help you sort out information for both decision making and problem solving. When you are trying to solve a problem, you attempt to find the root cause of an issue. When you make a decision, you pick among different options and don't need to return to a root cause as you do in problem solving. You can turn to a simple rule to distinguish between a problem and a decision. If you know what you want, but don't know how to make it happen, you're confronting a problem. If you need to weigh different alternatives, but can't determine which option should prevail, you need to make a decision. The act of avoiding an issue to prevent someone else from difficulty is disempowering. You are not helping anyone through protecting them. Your biases can cloud both problem solving and decision making. When you confront a problem or need to make a decision, use all the senses that apply, sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, so you make yourself fully aware. Encouraging innovation. Always reflect on any failure as an opportunity to learn and develop yourself and your team. Ask, what can I learn? Instead of only, what went wrong? To encourage employees to innovate or to be more creative, help them overcome their emotional blocks. Staffers could fear that people might laugh at their suggestions. Or they could be apprehensive that someone might take credit for their ideas. As a leader, you want to find safe ways to allow your colleagues and employees to share ideas. With mindful practices, leaders can create a safe space in which employees can feel protected and able to express themselves. Promoting collaboration. Make sure your colleagues know you want to support and encourage collaboration. Use briefings to keep your team up to date about any challenges they face. Energize your colleagues to work together. Ask them to reflect about their progress and offer constructive suggestions. 
Use mindful meditation that encourages compassion to help team members become more accepting of each other and more willing to understand. Draw on all your colleagues to achieve collectively what none of them could do alone. Managing emotions. Your emotional agility depends on your capacity to manage your feelings and respond appropriately to your staff members and colleagues' emotions. How you deal with emotional situations depends on deciphering the circumstances you face. Use mindful practices to determine the most appropriate emotional response. Then call on your emotional agility and insight to elicit an aligned response from the other people in the transaction. Emotional agility has four aspects. Showing up. Confront what you think and feel, and accept your ideas and emotions. Stepping out. Back away from thoughts and feelings to underline your ability to remain in control. Walking your why. Understand, appreciate and live your values. Moving on. Make small adjustments to your perceptions and practices. Keep them aligned with your core values. Willingly bring about changes to improve yourself. Some leaders, and indeed the skeptics, see self-care as unnecessary, and, by association, mindfulness as selfish. Practicing mindfulness can strengthen your abilities in each area. As a leader, you can draw on your emotional agility to help your employees and teams perform at their peak. A healthy work environment has clear, affirmative guidelines. No one should fear personal attacks. Your organization should define responsibilities rather than relying on criticism to move ahead. The act of helping others is not only of benefit to those being helped, but to those who witness it. Building confidence and self-esteem. Leaders' faith in their own capabilities is extremely valuable, so work to develop faith in yourself. Self-confidence makes you a better leader and enables you to call on your experiences and on the practice of mindfulness. Assess the areas in which you have confidence and those where you don't. Gaining a precise understanding of your capacities can help you avoid bravado. It also gives you the courage to hold fast to what you believe. Managers who lack confidence tend to act with excessive caution or to seek unnecessary counsel. Instead, develop a peer support group you can call on when difficulties confront you. Establish links with people who can help you feel good about yourself but also build healthy boundaries when you relate to other people. Meditation is recommended to build up internal resilience with the very act of deep breathing promoting positive physiological changes in times of stress. To function at your best, take care of yourself. Recognize that self-care isn't the same as self-indulgence. It indicates strength, not weakness. Leaders who don't tend to their health can become more prone to error. They may fail to see the root causes of the problems they are trying to solve, miss possible solutions and end up exhausted. To be a strong leader, you need to get enough exercise, eat healthy food and monitor your schedule so you get enough rest. Failure to keep these conditions in mind could make you prone to illness. Mindful practice enables you to attend to many roles and choices in your life as fully as you can to get as much out of them as you can. Society expects leaders to persevere despite obstacles. Recent research suggests that individuals who practice mindfulness are able to consider unpleasant feelings without being overcome by those feelings. These messages or affirmations can include such thoughts as, May I be kind to myself. May I find peace and healing. I am doing the best that I can in this moment. And, may I find ease with things just as they are. Just as the light of a single candle has the power to dispel darkness in a room, so also the light developed in one person can help dispel the darkness in several others. Research also suggests that repetition of positive messages while engaging in practical mindful activities, such as breathing exercises, yoga or meditation, helps build resilience. In Richard Wiseman's book The Luck Factor, he explains the benefit of using affirmations. He suggests that most people function as naive empiricists. That is, they tend to look for factors that support their current perspectives. If you state an affirmation such as, I am lucky, your mind tends to look for events that support this view. Increasing resilience and boosting energy. No one likes failure. People find it hard to accept. However, executives who confront a failed project or business endeavor can use mindfulness to examine what happened, 
where they may have failed and what lessons they need to learn from this experience to prepare them for success in the future. Leaders need to recover after a failure. You need to know that simply not succeeding isn't something reprehensible. In poker, you can make a killing if you get a good hand, yet your real skill as a player comes when you get a weak hand. Use your learning to light the way. Use meditation to increase your resilience. Deep breathing can help you counter stress. If you have only a limited time, try to concentrate on something that has special significance to you. What makes this object, person, moment, place or work of art important to you? Picture the feelings and the ambience that connects with this signifier. Savor how it makes you feel. Tap into the feelings associated with it when you need resilience. You may prefer a mindfulness approach that grants you greater energy. If so, try this exercise. Write down something that has significance and meaning for you. Restate what you have written three times. Bring back to your mind what you've achieved, both in life and in your imagination, and watch your achievements like a movie. Then reiterate your statement of achievements. This should reawaken your inspiration and drive. Changing constantly. The pace of change continues to accelerate. In the past, the skills people learned could be valuable throughout their lives. They could teach them to their descendants, so lessons learned could prove beneficial for centuries. Today, however, you can learn a critical career skill and find it outmoded in months. But technology can be an asset that allows you to gather information to keep you abreast of your role, monitor change in your industry, improve your skills, and learn how to build meaning into your work and your personal life. The business environment has changed in three significant ways. One, you most likely won't have just one employer for your whole career. Two, artificial intelligence and robotics have altered the nature of the work you can expect to do. Three, some competencies will lose relevance almost as fast as you acquire them. Your practice of mindfulness helps you deal with this relentless change. Being mindful increases your capacity for openness and patience, and strengthens your ability to lead. The study of mindfulness differs from other learning in another way. If you take a pause while acquiring knowledge of mindfulness, you don't have to fear losing what you learned. You can always be mindful. Take a ways. Mindfulness can help you feel positive, focused and resilient. Practicing mindfulness can strengthen your leadership skills. Mindful activities, such as deep breathing, yoga and meditation, can help you build resilience. You can use mindfulness to improve your emotional agility, which is an asset in leading your employees and teams. Leaders must have the emotional insight to create safe spaces in which employees can share their insights. Mindfulness can make you a more aware leader who is conscious of your prejudices, goals and values. Most children become less creative as they become older and more educated. Mindfulness can help you tap into your creativity. Affirmations work because most people are naive empiricists who tend to look for factors that support their current perspectives. Leaders need confidence so they don't act with excess caution. To function at your best as a leader, you need to take care of your health. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe this channel for more videos.